So today we're going to be talking about AAC's uh, open tip match line of 5.56 ammunition, specifically the 77 grain and the 69 grain OTM. So a few years ago, Palmetto State Armory came out with their own line of ammunition, and the thing that caught most people's attention was the 77 grain open tip match loading because it's coming in at a little over 50 cents a round, like you find any, anywhere from 55 to 60 cents a round um, on their website. So. That was really appealing to a lot of people, including me, because most of your 77 grain match ammunition is a dollar plus per round. The Black Hills, for instance, is like a dollar 40 per round, so this is coming in at about a third the cost. So a few years ago, I had bought uh, 200 rounds of this, and it shot really great. The velocities were really consistent, about 26, 30 feet per second was the average and standard deviation out of a box. because. I, I chronograph just about every round I shoot, but standard deviation was a little over 20, which isn't great, but for box ammunition, it's, it's not too bad at all. And it was grouping 1.2 MOA. So after shooting a lot of that uh, on paper and out to even a thousand yards, uh, I decided to buy some more because I was pretty impressed. So I bought 200 rounds more and that lot of ammunition, it did have a different lot number because I, I checked after it was starting to shoot really poorly because it was grouping about two plus MOA and the velocities were really inconsistent. So I'd be getting from like 2610 to 2720 within the same box, which is not very conducive for a long range uh, load. So um, I was pretty bummed about that, but I took a risk and I bought another 700 rounds and that's mostly what I've been shooting lately and it's it was better it's definitely shooting better the velocities are back down to where they should be and I don't have those crazy extreme spreads but um, and it's grouping better which will so real quick a little bit about me most of the I don't know about most but a lot of the shooting I've been doing growing up has been long range and shooting groups at 100 yards I reload quite a bit and so load development and just shooting groups at 100 yards is something I'm pretty experienced at, uh, more experienced than your average person. So I, I feel really confident behind a gun shooting groups at 100 yards, especially something as light recoiling as a 5.56. So I do believe these groups are really representative. I, of, of all the shooting I did shooting these groups, I don't, I don't think I pulled any shots. So we're not gonna call anything a flyer. That's my biggest pet peeve. When I see people grouping a gun or grouping ammo, they'll shoot like a three round group sometimes, have one go off and make it like a 1.8 inch group. And they're like, oh, I pulled that, that this is a sub MOA gun. They're judging that off of two rounds, but. With the SSA, I'm gonna call that a flyer on me. So that's the first sub MOA, sub MOA group. I am my razor cord. Yep. Now look at this, guys. I mean, one flyer, let's just say right here, that's me. Look at these four uh, uh, bullet holes. Yeah, other than that, sub MOA accuracy. 262, look at these shots. Four back to back over here. The fifth shot, yeah, that was totally me. One flyer, I think that was me. Uh, and I'll, you know, I'm not the perfect long range shot, but I, I gave it all a leg. So I've got six five round groups, so 30 shots um, with the 77 grain open tip match. So we had a group of 1.6, 1 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.3, 1 1.2. And like I said, I, I felt pretty good about all these. So uh, the average group size is 1.48. Um, could, could I have done better? Maybe, but I think this is pretty representative. Would a match barrel have done better? Maybe. I, I'd, I, I've had really good luck with the Daniel Defense barrels, but this is just what I got. Every gun's gonna be different. Every lot of ammunition is gonna be different, but um, I'm actually pretty happy with that. So the, yeah, the average group size over 30 rounds is 1.48. And the velocity, put this up on screen, um, but I had 29 shots because I forgot to hit a button on my first shot. So I got 29 shots. Uh, standard deviation of 13.7, which is actually, I'm really impressed with that. I'm super happy with that for factory ammo. Um, extreme spread of 58, so, but out of 29 rounds, that's not bad. That's a little bit better than I would have expected. So average speed of 2661. So this is honestly like on the faster end of a lot of the 77 grain match ammo. Uh, Federal, for instance, a lot of their stuff is shooting like sub 25 out of my 16 inch barrels. So I'm honestly pretty impressed with this. Uh, some people might not be happy with one and a half MOA, but for a bullet or for a round that's costing 55 cents a round and is 
is consistent. See 1.6, 1.6, 1.5, 1.7, 1. Like it's shooting, it's shooting really good. And as you can see, I'll roll in some footage of me shooting a thousand yards with it. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. Okay, so we get both of those. Okay, we've got three, so let's do a triple. Oh, we got wind. Okay, so I'm gonna hold just barely right edge, but we'll see what we do. We got a triple tap. So moving over to the 69 grain OTM, this is what I'm gonna start moving towards. So we've got 0 0.73, 1.2. This this one sucks. I'm not sure what happened here, but I got 1.9. Um, but so 0 0.73, 1.2, 1.45, 1.25, 0.74 bringing that 30 shot average group size to 1.2. Um, so even more impressive, if we were to exclude this, our average would be like barely under MOA or right at MOA, but we're not gonna exclude it because like I said, I was I was feeling confident with all these. So yeah, the 69 grain stuff, the, the BC is a little bit lower, but the speed is gonna carry it to where they fly almost exactly the same out to a thousand yards. I'll roll in the drop charts here. They're almost identical and what's nice is the my zero for these is the same so I can alternate between these and use the same dope and the 69 grain ammo is cheaper so get both a lot of people will default to the 77 grain because it's all they've really heard about but try both I really think most people are gonna have better luck with the 69 grain it's cheaper and it shoots better in my experience so um, I'm really happy with that so let's talk about the velocity and the consistency numbers I actually have 34 shots on here because I was shooting at some steel with it also. So standard deviation of 24.9, so it's not quite as good. Extreme spread of 81 over 34 shots. That's higher than I would like, but um, it's still not bad for 55 cents around or even 50 cents around on sale. Um, oh, and the speed average was 28.60. So that speed is really impressive. The standard deviation isn't bad. Um, it's still usable even out to a thousand yards. And I shot this bullet in ballistic gel, if you remember from a few videos back, and it actually performed really well. The bullet stayed together and mushroomed out and penetrated nice, so I personally am going to be moving to the 69 grain ammo once there's more in stock. All right, so uh, you've seen how it performs with the AAC match ammo, but I'm going to show you how it performs just with, it's, it's high quality ball ammo, but just still ball ammo and some Black Hills because I had 11 rounds left that I found in my storage room that I shot just for fun. So MEN, it's this German 56 grain stuff, 2.3, 1.4, 2.3. So not great. Uh, I don't know what the average is. I'll put it up on screen, but the velocity was 3,088, standard deviation of 20. So that's pretty good. Extreme spread of 71. So not too far off from the AAC stuff, to be honest. GG and G 62 grain. Um, this stuff has been really impressive in the past. It's it's you normally find it for more money than the 77 grain AAC, but this stuff is really fast. So 3,016 feet per second. Just as kind of a side note, out to a thousand yards, it drops less than the uh, 77 grain and the 69 grain. This is like nine mils out of my 16 inch barrel to get to a thousand yards. So. 1.6, 1.3, and 2. So, not bad at all. And it kind of maintains zero, so that's kind of nice. I could also alternate between that if I wanted to. But I'll put the average group size on the screen because I didn't write it down. So then, I got two groups of the Black Hills uh, 77 grain with the Sierra Match King. So we had 1.18 and 0.77. And I've shot a lot of the Black Hills in the past, and 0.77 is not typical, like normally I'm seeing 0.9 to 1.2 is like, it was 
always that. So that's a pretty good group. So 1.18 is a little more representative, but still, you know, standard deviation of 21 from those uh, 10 shots. Velocity of 2601, so it's a little bit slower. Extreme spread of 46. So that's how this gun shoots with pretty much everything else, just to give you kind of a baseline of that gun. I think, I think it did shoot the capabilities of the AAC ammo with it be, with it shooting 1.5 MOA. I don't think that was, I think that was representative of the ammo, not the gun, but because um, with the 69 grain and this, it's shooting better, so if that makes sense. Like one and a half MOA is what I would expect, but every gun's an individual, so. So this is kind of just showing you a baseline of what this gun is capable of with like some more generic ammo. It shoots really well with everything. Like Daniel Defense Barrels have been really impressive. Like there's no ammo that it just, it seems to shoot really poorly, but it, at the end of the day, it's still not a match barrel. Like you might be getting better results with the AAC ammo in your stainless steel barrel, but I'm gonna stick with the Daniel Defense just because it performs well with basically everything. So going back to the uh, 77 grain, where did it go? Going back to the 77 grain uh, results, is one and a half MOA good enough for you? Um, you really have to decide on what you're doing. For me, I'm shooting targets at uh, zero to a thousand yards with it. I, I live at a higher elevation, so it's a little bit easier to get out to a thousand yards. So just keep that in mind. So it depends on what you're trying to do. A lot of people say with the SPR like concept or whatever that they're going zero to 800 yards and it's like, okay, but shooting what? Like if you're shooting a NIPSIC target, then like, yeah, this is plenty good. Like you don't even, it's gonna perform fine. But if you're wanting to shoot small targets, like something the size of a cantaloupe at like 500 yards, you might want something that shoots a little bit better. I, I had pretty good luck shooting an Ipsic uh, head plate at 500 yards, really consistent. Okay, that was good. That was also good. Touch low, but still neck, chest ish area. Ooh. That went off the left side. Right in the face. But if you're wanting like ultimate precision, you might want to try some different ammo just to see if you can get something that shoots a little better than one and a half. Like if you can get 1.1 or better, you're, you're going to notice uh, a difference shooting a really small target at 500 yards. But if you're thinking even reduced size zipsic out at distance like 500 800 yards I think you're gonna be fine with this and like I said I shoot it out to a thousand but the target is uh, like two and a half feet wide two and a half feet tall but it's it's really it's fairly easy to shoot that distance with this ammo so I'm, I'm still really impressed so the elephant in the room is kind of uh, AAC or Palmetto State's uh, quality control I've heard Personally, I've heard from friends of mine who've had their gun, like their bolt carrier groups destroyed just by like, I don't know if it's overpressured ammo or what, but shooting this same stuff. And you just see some things on forms that kind of make you question it. I've had good luck besides that weird lot, but also in this really great lot of ammunition while I was like shooting these groups, I was loading magazines and then I saw one of the rounds I was trying to load in and it had a black tip and I'll roll in a picture here and it was seated out far. So it, I think it's one of their saber bullets and that's not really confidence inspiring. They've just got like, I almost wonder if maybe that, uh, that lot of ammunition that was shooting poorly and had a big extreme spreads if there wasn't like some 69 grain bullets that found their way in there. But Palmetto State's arm or Palmetto State Armory's quality control is just, it's a question mark sometimes. Like I said, I personally have had good luck so far with like not having my gun explode, but it makes you kind of nervous to order a huge amount of ammunition because where I've seen the inconsistencies in the lots and just like guns breaking because of it. Um, it just makes you pause a little bit. I still plan on doing it. Like when, it, when the 69 grain stuff comes back in stock, I'm going to order a thousand rounds of it and just cross my fingers and hope for the best. And we're going to do a lot of testing, you know, 
shoot a lot of groups and make sure we got a good lot of ammunition because if, if not, I'm probably going to see if I can return it or something. That is one thing about Palmetto State Armory is their customer service has been great in the past, so hopefully they would make it right if something like that happened. If you're like a cop or something, or if, if you're going to be using this in a real scenario, you might want to consider maybe just spending the extra money on the Black Hills because like, like you saw, it did shoot a little bit better overall. Not a huge difference, but it did shoot better. And Black Hills is kind of known for killing a lot of people and being consistent. So um, just if you get the AAC ammo, just do your due diligence and try to chronograph it and shoot groups and see if you got a good lot so I don't want this to come across like I don't like this ammo because I, I really do like this ammo for the for the cost it performs really well and I've been able to make fairly consistent hits out to a thousand yards so there's really not a whole lot I can ask for uh, this rifle for instance wouldn't be configured the way it was or the way it is if it wasn't for this ammo because there's something I wanted to do for a long time is just a, a long-range AR-15 but uh, with match ammo costing what it did before this it was like a dollar fifty per round and it just I couldn't afford to feed this a steady diet of that like it was just not really an option so this being a third the cost I'm able to shoot a lot of it for cheap and it performs really well so I'm actually pretty enthusiastic about it uh, it's just the, I hope the quality control uh, tightens up because I, I really want to see, I want to be able to order a thousand rounds now and then a thousand rounds uh, six months later and know it's going to perform the same. So I really recommend you buy it, you try it and um, group it, chronograph it for sure. I've chronographed probably 400 rounds of this at least because I just chronograph most of the time I'm shooting. But just chronograph it, make sure it's consistent and if it doesn't, maybe contact Palmetto State and see if, if they can do anything for you. But um, yeah, thank you.